<clears throat> good uh, afternoon. Welcome to this uh, Photonics Plus public presentation for Matija Leider and Gregory Pandro, VP Research at Matija. And let's uh, get started. So the, the, the presentation goes over uh, our product, so a light field sensor. Uh, we take aspiration from from nature, um, trying to mimic actually or to imitate uh, what's out there in, in nature. Uh, so this is the eye of uh, the compound eye of uh, in, an insect. Um, for the best uh, out there, uh, they are composed of quite a lot of matidium. So each each of these um, elements are collecting information. And for our, our name, Matilla. Um, so th this is one of the most powerful uh, image sensors out there. Uh, Matilla, in, in short, in very short, so we are actually a very uh, new uh, company active in the field of, of LIDAR. We started operation in December 2019. We are publicly funded, so that means we have um, a project run um, for public organization. And also some shareholders. So the, the, for the time being, the main market and main customer remains uh, ESA, so the space agency. Um, as we have a project running on metrology, so the, the aim is to actually measure in space um, specific uh, shape, um, specific antenna, actually. Um, now, still related to ESA, we are part of the incubation center uh, of ESA. Uh, both, and we have two locations, so both uh, in, in Madrid, and in uh, Nordvac. So Nordvac allows uh, to be close to, to, to Restec, to the research center of design. But uh, in parallel to this, I mean, we have also uh, access to the Dutch um, ecosystem in, in photonics. So not only on, on making chips, uh, but also in, in, uh, in packaging the, the chips. So what is our concept? So we actually depart, uh, depart from, from startup concept, like cameras, optical phasers, or image-forming lenses. And we, we position ourselves, um, um, yeah, in, in, in a sort of hybrid way, I mean, in, in, in between, right? So, so we, we use a continuous wave uh, concept, so it's a FMC uh, frequency modulated uh, wave concept. However, at the same time, we also use polylination, right? Which, which differs from most of the um, system, LiDAR systems actually are there. And why we do that is because we believe that there is still uh, for the current uh, LiDAR system, still um, uh, one very big limiting factor is actually the amount of light coming back to the sensor. And meaning that means that um, there is always a trade-off to do, right? So either the, the distance is not the, the right one or either the sensitivity at a specific distance is not, is not the right one, right? And by doing what we do, we are able to do both, I mean, the, the, the length and the distance as well as sensitivity. Furthermore, it's a fully solid state solution. So it means that uh, we reduce complexity in, in, in optics, in, in, in size and weights. For specific market like space, that's important because um, carrying a, an object which is pretty large, a sensor which is pretty large is, 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 is a problem. The space is limited in, in a spacecraft. And but beyond that, if you look at, at um, automotive market, for example, we are high safe because we're going to use, um, we are using 1.5 micron uh, laser source. We are completely immune to interference, so or, or not like the other LIDAR out there. But this is fully um, independent of inter interference, mostly because we use a, a coherent uh, source. So the, the system um, is schematically here presented here. So we have on one end receivers, so coherent parallel wavefront sensor, and on the other end the illumination, right? The fluid illumination as described above. Um, so no scanning, no scanning, um, no scanning is involved here. Yeah. No, no, either the, the phase array or, or a man's mirror scanning the scene. Uh, so we do direct capture of the light reaching the sensor. It's all um, digitally processed um, in order to separate the contribution from all the different directions. And uh, we use current detection and demodulation. Means that means we, uh, we, we. On one end, we have much more light coming back to the system, and on, on the other end, we keep the sensitivity performance of the FMCW system. So the current uh, parallel waveform sensor, the, so it's a chip actually, it's a photonic chip. It's, it's made of um, waveguides and waveguides and gratings. Um, so no uh, moving parts, 
how does it work? So actually the light comes back from, from the scene, right? From the, the thing the scene that's been illuminated. So here it's a, it's, a, it's a first generation. So it's very limited number of, of channels collecting back the light. It's 128. Um, and the signal, um, once collected by the wavelength, is actually processed here in the middle of the, the chip and sent back to some, some detectors. And actually it's mixed up, and this is a, the, the, the coherence detection, it's mixed up with a, a, a reference pattern coming from the other side of the chip, right? So still also involving a uh, um, wavelength. Uh, so we own the, the IP on the, on the receiver, but not only, only that, also on the, on the algorithm uh, around in order to make an, an image. But the concept here um, uh, will result in uh, match performance uh, potential. So, so far in terms of distance, um, uh, yeah, we, 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 I mean, we have, we, we have shown uh, we can reach uh, yeah, a specific distance, but uh, this is also limited by the, um, by the, the current implementation, right? So by, by going, I mean, by improving the way we, we have assembled the, the system, which should be um, actually much, much, um, much further. But what we done actually by the end of CRS 6, we have been, into a fabrication plant, we actually monitor the process. Huh? So this is how we define ourselves to be CRF6. And that's one of our market, huh? monitoring um, with LiDAR. Parallel to the, the receiver side, there is also a huge part play by illumination because we use this flow illumination. Um, still, I mean, due to the limited amount of light coming back onto stamped LiDAR, right? So we have to one milliwatt coming, coming back at 300 meter. I mean, one milliwatt at 300 meter means what comes back is very extremely limited. And therefore, uh, it, the trade-off needs to be applied, right? <clears throat> Limiting that for performance. So either you, yeah, you don't have distance or you don't have sensitivity, right? So it's one or the other. Um, now, in terms of capability, so we actually, we have actually designed this source. We are testing, currently testing them. They are made at 1.5, so it's actually AI safe. Um, and also made in, in, in a batch process, so it's potentially a large volume uh, production. And what we aim at doing is to, to generate a source uh, which is uh, of one watt uh, con continuous wave. Right? Uh, and the, the our architecture is also compatible with parallel illumination. So it's not only one watt um, generated by one laser, but it could be uh, a series of lasers generating in 100 milliwatts. Now, so the concept is actually very close to, to what happened actually in, in, in a car, in, autom in automotive, where we had the two light bulbs for the car generating uh, two watts and, and allowing us to see um, at far, right? So the eye being a uh, vector sensor. Now, why do we want to use uh, this device? Um, now, in a um, Current projects, um, so we are space bonds. Um, and here in these projects, so this is the, the, the picture here. So we are actually aiming at measuring large antennas. So large antennas are getting larger and larger. So they are deployed in space. Uh, so they are folded on ground and deployed in space. But in space, um, because there is a lot of debris, but also uh, turbulences, uh, the, the antenna might change. The shape of the antenna might change. And the pointing might change. Right? There's also two transported aspects of not only the shape, but also the pointing. And that means this antenna being used for transmitting information, um, either downstream or, or upstream. <coughs> uh, losing the pointing or the shape will generate into a loss of information. Right? But it's very important to have on board for the satellite a sensor that allows us to allow the space agency to, to control the, the shape and eventually reshape the antenna. Uh, so here, uh, what we're going to bring, what we bring is actually the unprecedented accuracy. So we're measuring it actually uh, with 10 mic connection at 20 mic at 20 meter. The, the number of points is not so important, at least at, at first. I mean, for the smaller uh, antennas, now, the larger it gets, um, the more points will be required also. However, the second market of interest is actually process control. So what we have demonstrated in TRL6 at the end of the, the last year, uh, where Accuracy is still required here, but here the number of points is, is very important, right? And, and this has to be done also very fast right? because it's, it's a loop that means you have to be able to detect in your chain, well, for example, the car is passing by, um, being able to detect the, the, the defects um, in, in your product. Now, in the long term, longer term, um, so we still aim at automotive, but then that will require uh, um, moving to 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 different shapes moving to the different, uh, I mean, much larger number of points. 
So if you have any question, please uh, refer to our uh, website. So this is still the information from the from the Photon Plus. Um, but if you type uh, materialider.com, um, you will see you should be able to find our uh, email addresses. So please don't hesitate to contact us if you want more information about our solution. Thank you.